Okay, so these are questions on the riders and the clauses and provisions in a life insurance policy. What is the primary function of the insuring clause? So the primary function is to outline the insurance company's promise to pay benefits upon the insured's death. So the insuring clause says, hey, when you die, we are going to pay a claim. Okay. What does the misstatement of age or sex provision address? Adjustments to premiums and benefits based on correct age or sex or gender. So what that means is say someone was born a man and then they at some point say I'm a woman, right? So that person says, okay, well, I'm going to apply as a woman right now. And the life insurance company says, okay, that's fine. Apply as a woman. But when you die, we're going to pay the benefit as if you were a man. Okay. So they go by gender at birth. So the life insurance, so misstatement of age or, or gender, you guys. So we work with a lot of elderly clients, guys. It's You're going to get some clients who are like, ah, we had one a few weeks ago. The lady's like, oh yeah, my family came over. We just celebrated my 72nd birthday. She was 73. She was born in, in 1951. That's 73 years old. And they, her family just celebrated her 72nd birthday. <laughs> so her whole family can't do math, right? They thought she was 72, but she's 73. So you're going to get people who think that they're older or younger than they really are. She's like, wow, I never sat there and just did the math on it. I'm like, how long has your family not known how old you are? <laughs> like, Crazy, right? It's like, yo, like, how long has this been going on? Like, did you have two birthdays of the same year? Or did you just skip one? You know what I'm saying? I'm like... Did you, you know, like, or did you never have a birthday? And then one day your parents are like, oh yeah, I think she's like 17. Let's just do it. Right. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe she graduated high school a little late. So her parents didn't want to make her feel bad. They're like, okay, you're 18 now. Right. All right. Um, yeah. So that's how it works. So if the person, so what happens with the misstatement of age or gender, if they find out during the policy period, um, they can change the, 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 premiums they can adjust the premiums make any adjustments there if they find out after the person dies obviously they just change the death benefit so if someone applies as a woman but they're a man then they're going to get you know uh, uh the death benefit will lower right or vice versa the death benefit would increase okay so and then age if someone says i'm 83 but they were actually 73 then the death benefit will be higher when they pass so it just adjusts based on that the typical contestable period is two years on a life insurance policy. That's what we talked about. So it, what happens if someone dies in the first two years, the life insurance company is going to challenge the claim and they're going to say, hey, we don't think this was legit. Right? I mean, think about it. If if you, it, it, it makes sense. If I was a life insurance company and I, re, and I did all my research and I thought someone was going to die in the first two years, I wouldn't give them life insurance. So if it happens, they're like, man, we're something's fishy. Yeah. So what does the suicide clause stipulate? Suicide is excluded from coverage for a specific period after the policy's effective date. Which provision allows for the policy owner to transfer ownership rights? This is called the assignment provision. Okay, guys. So when someone assigns provision or when someone assigns their policy, it gives that person the rights to the policy. So there's a couple types of assignment. There's absolute assignment, which is we're transferring all rights of this policy. So say I had a policy on my dad, and then I transfer it to my brother. Once I use assignment, once I use the assignment provision to transfer the rights to the policy, of the policy to my brother, he can change the beneficiary, unless it's an irrevocable beneficiary. He can change. He has possess. He has ownership over the cash value. He can make all the changes to the policy. Okay. And then there's collateral assignment. So collateral assignment is typically with a loan. All right. So, um, if you say someone wants what goes to get a really big deal on real estate. Right. So say someone goes to take out like um, a friend of mine does like really big real estate deals. So he always wants to get a life insurance, a big life insurance policy. 
because he can go to the bank and say, hey, look, if I die, you're going to get your all your money back. So he can own the life insurance. So say he gets a you know $100 million life insurance policy, then, then he can go to the bank and say, hey, you can own this policy. That way, if I die, you know you're going to get your money back. You know you're going to get paid on it. So that's called collateral assignment. And then what happens is the bank owns the policy until the loan's paid off. And if he dies, the bank keeps whatever amount is needed to satisfy the loan. And then the ben- the other beneficiary gets the difference. Does that make sense? So collateral assignment is like a temporary thing to pay off the debt. Okay. So the free look provision, what's the purpose of the free look provision? The free look prov- provision gives the policy owner time to review and cancel the policy if they don't like it. So the purpose of the free look provision is to protect policy owners from agents, maybe misstating things about the policy or someone not fully understanding it or someone getting cold feet about it. So typically it's anywhere from 10 to 14 days from when someone gets the policy that they can cancel it for a full refund. That's legally 10 to 14 days in most states. Most insurance companies actually give people 30 days. That way there's no chance of them possibly violating any free look laws. Okay. So it's usually, but statewide, it's usually 10 to 14 days. Some states may be different than that, but usually that's what it is. Anywhere from 10 to 14 days, guys. Okay. So the, the client gets their policy in the mail. They take a look at it. They don't like it. They can get a refund of the first payment. Sometimes we close using that. So that's a really weak sales close, but sometimes we'll be like, Hey, look, let's apply for the plan. And you get approved take a look at it, go over it with your family. You got 10 to 14 days anyway to get a refund of your first premium if you decided something you don't want. Right? Usually that's like if someone's like, oh, I got to talk to my wife. Like, okay, well, you know, talk to her about it. You're going to get this in the mail, look it over. If you guys decide you don't want it, you can cancel or we can make any adjustments from there. They can also make adjustments in the free look period too, okay, guys? So they can like increase the coverage, lower the coverage, depending on what how much they get approved for. So like for us, say say the company says, okay, you're approved up to $500,000 of coverage for everything that you gave us. Then they can they can be like, okay, well, I want 300, or I want 250, or I want 400. If they want more than that, they may have to go through additional underwriting. But they're, they're like, up to this amount, we're going to insure you. Anything below that, you can adjust your premiums to get that amount. Does that make sense? So, the, okay, what is the grace period protect against? The grace period protects against unintentional lapse. So think about this. Imagine someone gets really sick. They get a life insurance policy. They've been paying on it for 30 years. They get really sick. They go to the hospital and they came, their, their accounts get all messed up. They miss their payments. Now, the life insurance company, typically they give 30 to 60 days of a missed payment before the policy lapses. And they do that because they understand people have financial hardships and where the policy won't um, lapse. All right. Now, most insurance policies, most insurance policies, they, if it's a whole life policy, they'll actually take out of the cash value to pay that premium before it lapses. Okay. All right. Um, what what is like that? The name of that is is missing me right now. If someone remembers the name of that, put it in the chat. But there's a there's a name for that clause. You guys will learn about it. Where if someone has a policy and they have cash value and they miss their payment before the policy lapses from non-payment, it'll come out of the cash value to pay for it. Okay. I forget the name of it. It's in there. It's on the Is it the auto provision? Not auto. It's something else. Um Uh, automatic premium loan. That's what it is, Nikki. Yep. Automatic premium loan. That's what it's called. Yeah. Auto. Yeah. So automatic. Okay. Cause I was reading it last night and I was just checking. No, good job. That's what it is. Automatic premium loan. Correct. Good job. Awesome. All right. What is required for policy reinstatement? So if the policy does lapse, you need proof of insurability and payment of your overdue premiums. Okay. So you got to say, Hey, I'm still insurable. Happened to one of my buddies uh, a couple months ago. The guy, he had a life insurance policy for like 30 years and he was not diabetic when he got it. Now he's like super unhealthy and diabetic and that doesn't make him super unhealthy, but other things he does are very unhealthy and he's diabetic on top of that. So when he got the policy, he was like in tip top shape, 
the policy lapsed because he didn't pay for like six months. And then now he's like, oh, I want my life insurance back. So they said, okay, cool. But you need to go through our medical checks again. And he's like mad that he has to do that. But I told him, I'm like, you got to think about it from their standpoint, right? Like someone could get a policy and then not pay for years and then get sick and be like, oh, I want my life insurance back. So um, to get reinstated, if your policy lapses, you just have to prove that you're still healthy. Okay. All right. Any questions, guys? Okay. So um, next, we're going to go to what does the waiver of premium rider do? The waiver of premium rider waives premiums if the insured becomes disabled. Every insurance company has a different definition of disabled. You're going to learn about this. Usually what they say at first for the first couple of years is if you can't do your job that you had to leave, then they'll keep paying the premiums. And then after two years, just to make sure the person's not milking it, they'll say you have to be disabled from doing any job based on your prior, prior education or experience in training. Okay. Does that make sense? So I, for, for two years, it's like, okay, if you were a surgeon and you, your hand you know, you're, you can't move your hand the same. Obviously, you know, you can't do that job. But then after two years, they're like, if you can't do anything else at all, that's then then we'll keep paying, paying your premiums. But if you could go do something else, if your hand ain't that bad, then we expect you to do something else for work. One second here, guys. Okay. What is the purpose of cash value provision? So cash value allows you to borrow against the policy. So I'll go over a little history of cash value here for you guys. Okay. So you guys, if you've been reading about this, cash value is like equity in a life insurance policy. So you know how you buy a house and you get equity in it, you can resell it and hopefully make some profit off the taxes, insurance, and, and repairs and everything you put into it. Life insurance policies are the same thing. It grows in value. So what happened at first, life insurance policies used to all be whole life and they never gave any cash value back, Okay. Then what happened is people weren't keeping their policy. So insurance companies were like, how can we get people to keep these policies? And some of them suggested, well, let's give them some of their premiums back. You know, we're making a ton of money off this money that they're giving us. Because essentially someone gives their premium to a life insurance company, they invest it, and then they keep the return on the investment. That's why insurance is so profitable. They say, hey, if someone dies, we're going to pay the claim, but it's not really going to matter because of how much money we're making off the interest. So life insurance companies started saying, well, we can give some of it back, make some of it available so that we can incentivize people to keep their policy. Say, hey, well, if you cancel this, you're going to, you know, in the future, it's going to keep growing. So they started implementing cash value. So cash value allows people to borrow against the policy. When someone reaches age 100, the cash value equals the death benefit, all right? So when someone each reaches age 100, the cash value equals the death benefit, and it's called endowing, the policy endows. What option is available under the non-forfeiture provision? So non-forfeiture values have to do with cash value. A non-forfeiture value is essentially a value where if someone has cash value and they cancel the policy, they still get something, okay? It's like a divorce where everybody gets benefits, all right? So imagine 
you're you're in a relationship with a life insurance company and you're like, I want a divorce. And they're like, okay, cool. Well, you can still keep some. All right? You're like, okay, sweet. So it's either the cash value you get in a lump sum. The default is extended term. So what happens is if someone cancels a whole life policy, non-forfeiture values only pertain to whole life policies as well, guys. So if someone cancels a whole life policy and there's cash value, the, the default option is called extended term. So say they have a $100,000 whole life policy with $20,000 of cash value. They say, I don't want to pay my policy anymore. They cancel it. The default option is for that $20,000 to buy however many years of $100,000 term insurance. So if someone has a $100,000 whole life policy and they cancel it or say it lapses, the non-forfeiture value default is that that cash value is automatically going to extend that policy for however many years using the cash value. So the cash value goes to purchase a term policy with a face amount equal to the whole life policy for however many years that cash value will buy that policy for. I'll explain that again. So if someone has a $100,000 whole life policy, meaning if they die, the beneficiary gets $100,000. And then there's $20,000 of cash value in it. And the policy lapses from non-payment. By default, that $20,000 of cash value will buy a $100,000 term policy for however many years that $20,000 will buy a $100,000 term policy at that person's age. Does that make sense? That's one of the non-forfeiture values. It's called extended term. So it just extends their whole life into a term policy. They don't have to keep making payments on it at all. It's just this is how long your policy is going to go. There's another option called uh, reduced paid up. So what that means is they take that cash value and they buy a permanent policy with the cash value. You guys remember single premium whole life? Learning about that single premium whole life. So it's one big payment to buy a big whole life policy. So they take the cash value, say there's 20,000 in cash value, and they say, okay, that $20,000 in cash value will buy a $45,000 whole life policy right now. So you don't ever have to make another payment and you get a $40,000 a 40, or whatever I said, $45,000 full life policy for the rest of your life. Okay. And then obviously another one is someone can just take the money. That's fine too. They can take the cash. Okay. What happens if the insured dies during the grace period? So remember we talked about with the grace period, if they miss a premium, they got a month or two, depending on the state to pay back the premium before the policy lapses. If they die during the grace period, they get the death benefit minus the premium, which no one complains about. Sure, I'll take a million dollars minus my $150 payment. Sounds good. Oh, I get $999,850. All right. What is the consideration? So consideration clause is the exchange of value between the policy owner and the insurer. So in the consideration the consideration is the ins in the insurance company's perspective is their promise to pay a claim. The consideration from the applicant is their premium plus the statements and representations made in the application. Okay, so the insure the the consideration on per part of the person buying insurance is what they say in the app versus how much they pay. Okay. All right. What is a key feature of the policy loan provision? Loans are advances on policy proceeds and can be paid in. Really so a loan is an advance on the policy proceeds. 
what provision allows the policy owner to borrow against cash value? The automatic, oh, there we go. To pay premiums automatically. The automatic premium loan provision. What happens if they elect reduced paid up insurance? The policy is converted into a paid up policy with a lower face amount. Okay, that's a non-forfeiture value. John is reviewing his life insurance policy and wants to ensure that any changes are formally recognized. Which provision ensures that changes must be documented in writing and endorsed by the insurer? That's the modification provision. Okay, so any changes have to be done in writing and endorsed, endorsed by the insurer. Mary took out a life insurance policy and stated her age incorrectly. Upon her death, the insurer discovers the error, which provision will guide the insurer's response. Misstatement of age or sex provision. Okay. If uh, Paul has a life insurance policy with an accelerated benefits provision, if he is diagnosed with a terminal illness, what percentage of the death benefit might he receive in advance? In the course, it talks about 50%, but it could be any of these, to be honest. So it could be any of them, but the course talks about 50%. Jane's policy includes a free look provision. She decides to return the policy within the free look period. What will she receive from the insurer? She'll receive all of her premiums paid in. The entire contract provision ensures that nothing can be incorporated by reference, meaning the policy cannot refer to any external documents as part of the contract. So that's what we were talking about before, okay? The policy cannot refer to anything outside the contract as being part of the contract. Okay? The incontestable clause typically applies after a period of two years from the policy issue date. So most incontestable clauses are two years. The grace period typically lasts 30 days. So that's usually 30 days. Some states it's 60, but it's usually 30 days for grace period. And it may change too based on how frequently they pay their premiums, but don't worry about that. I don't even know why I said it. The suicide clause generally aligns with the incontestable period, which is usually two years. The policy loan provision allows the policy owner to borrow against the policy's cash value. Okay, cash value. Okay, cool. So, um, you want to see? I want to see if you guys have any other questions for me. Hello, hi. I have a question. Yeah. What's up? So, um, when we are licensed and beginning, of course, working with the company, what equipment do we need? A laptop and headphones, but what kind of laptop or headphones specifically do we need? Um, a, a minimum eight gigabyte laptop and a USB headset. So I'd recommend something that connects to your computer with a USB port. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good question. Okay. So I have a question. 